Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. My name is Mikey and today I'm introducing my new crystal scarf. And this is like my sparkle scarf, my crystal scarf, it's all fabulous. And the reason why I decided to call it my crystal instead of sparkle is that we're using a yarn in here called crystal. Okay. So what we've done is we mixed it with, with two yarns together. So we put the, our, the Coates and Clark, the Red Heart yarn in here. So we have the Economy White pure white and then I mixed it with the crystal uh, silver yarn and you'll need two balls of that and they're 50 grams and it does go a long way. So I really really love this it acts like a feather boa very quick to make it about one and a half movies and you'll have this action and you don't need to wear your scarf just like so you can actually just do it the conventional way too where you fold it in half wrap it around your neck and just feed it through. So either way I think this scarf is just really quite fantastic really nice and buff or uh, bulky, really fabulous, really fun, and unlike most of the eyelash yarns, this uh, crystal yarn is extremely soft on the skin, so it's not its not like one of those, um, just because it's shiny, it has to be an ear to like a carpet, so really fabulous, I love the way it flows, I love the way it looks, and join me right now in the studio, and we'll take you through how to do the step-by-step -step tutorial on the crystal scarf. And welcome back to another edition of the Crochet Crowd, and we're going to work on a sparkle scarf, and I'm using Red Heart yarn today, and that's compliments of Coates and Clark. And yes, this is a huge ball. And I'm also working with an eyelash yarn from Lens Mill Stores today, and this will create a sparkle scarf. And what's the difference between the shag scarf and this one? Just a little bit uh, slightly different wrapping technique that actually speeds you up even faster. What I use is I use a styler pen, compliments of Lori Mueller, and she's of exquisite designs. And I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner for this as well, and as well as the hook. Now this contraption here is just a homemade addition. I have a problem with moving this stuff around when I'm on camera, so I put it on the base so that I could just keep it still so that I can film accurately. So let's uh, get started with this tutorial and making this sparkles. The first thing we need to do is we need to load up the styler pen and I got quite a bit of email on that before on how to load these bad boys up especially when it's fluffy like this. Well you know what I have the patience of a reptile or something that you know whatever I'm trying to think of a good analogy it's not happening so all I do is I take a pipe cleaner and I put it into the end I just put the yarn over it like so and now push the pipe cleaner through make sure that you do close it so when it does go through pull out and just pull it the other side like that. and now I just grabbed onto the yarn here so that it won't fall out so that is your pipe cleaner I know ingenious I know I'm like whatever so now I want to do a slip knot so remember this is the back of my hand so I want to go wrap it around twice so the back of the hand taking the back over the forward and then the back now up and now because it's all really really fluffy it's kind of really it's fun stuff to use though I have to admit so it's gonna be like the the uh, shag scarf. We're going to leave uh, five empty pegs on one side and four on the other. And let's begin. So one, two, three, four. So go on the fifth here. So we're going to cast on. So moving the styler pen up and I left a generous tail on it so that I could wrap it around the first couple pegs so that it can get sealed in. Okay. So I'm just going to just take it by hand. So we're going to come down. Okay. Like that. I'm going to come and wrap around. We want it to twist. Okay, so now it's going to come over the other one, up and over. So now it twists over. Okay, down and up. So it twists over and now up and then down and then back up. Okay, so now it's the first one in there. Okay, we've done this kind of casting on before. So now let's move in my styler now. So just kind of pull the styler. Make sure you try to use your styler so it's straight up in with the pegs. Now this is the only time that you're actually going to go straight across. So you've just come around now. We've just come around just like so. And now you're going to go straight up and wrap the top one so that there's two sections. And we're going to come back and wrap this one so that there's two. So just wrap. See? And we want to create now the crossover so this is like the twist. So you just got to make sure every time you go over a peg that the next string is going up over top of it so that it crosses over. That's why it's called the twist knit stitch. So up and over. Okay. And we want to pretend that we're going to this peg so we'll come up on this side of the last one. Up and hold. Now everybody I'm just going to turn my thing around. I like 
always being consistent. So I like holding it down with my left hand. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to take the bottom up and you got to be very careful here with this fluffy stuff. It sometimes does pop off. Okay. So then, and there's going to be a lot of string to look at because you used the straggler into position. So you're just moving down through the loom. Okay. You don't want to go random. You just want to go in a row and now you can just do the other side. And it doesn't matter on the other side if you started from this side or you started over here, as long as you go in a round. Sorry, in a row. Okay, up and over. So we've now just cast it on, and this is fabulous. So let's get going. So this is now, we're gonna come straight down. Okay, so we actually ended on this side of the peg, so we're gonna come straight down. Okay, up and over, so that it crosses over. Okay, and now we go just like the, over. So make sure that each section is crossing over. Okay, now want, we actually technically should go here, but I don't want you to go here. I want you to go around all the way to the last peg, wrap around and come down. Did you see that? We'll do it again eventually anyway. So, so just now begin to knit. So why go in around? Well, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's kind of a pain to lift them off and to let them drop in the middle. So we're going to knit the other side as well. Why not just stay on the interior of the loom instead? So I'll just leave that into place and now let's go back. So we normally end on this side in between here. But because we went over here, we're actually on the outside. So the first one, we no longer go straight down. We actually come down on an angle, okay? And, and cross back over and then get that top one again. And just like so, and knit as normal. And now this time, instead of bouncing up to the top one, just like so, okay? And make sure you wrap around, okay? So you come up on the inside of the peg out and then back around. So let's begin to knit. So I'm holding this pretty firm over here. If you hold it loosey goosey, it tends to pop off. When I was practicing off camera, it was popping off and I was getting quite annoyed with it. So also I used my thumb there just to kind of hold it from popping. Because it's really fluffy yarn, you can't always determine what you're actually grabbing until you really get a good feel for it. So now we've done that, I push down. Now just take your, your hooky thing and just put it down, just like so. So now you don't have to just pick it up and let it fall in between. Now you don't have to take it from the outside like you did with the shag scarf, okay? So now we, we're on the outside of this peg. We should normally be on the inside, but we're on the outside because of the way we wrapped. So we come down across, okay? So we're on this side, we come down across to this and then back over and then rewrap. And then we're on the last one, instead of jumping straight over, just go on to the outside, wrap it around, and now wrap it and across. And now let's knit. Okay, let's do the other side. And you're already starting to fall out below the, uh, the loom on the, on the base there. So, this project will grow really super fast. Okay, so let's push everything down. So again, we don't come straight down, we come down on an angle, and then back up, down. Okay, and now we're gonna come out, back around, and, then, and through, just like so. So what I'm going to do everybody is that I don't want to cast this off on camera because I want to keep going because I want to do this as a sample piece. So again at the end just pick up just like so and let it just fall. So up and let it fall. Isn't that ingenious? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other video, the shag uh, scarf to show you how to cast off. Go now. So I don't need to cast this one off because I want to keep going. I want it kind of something sparkly and fun. You know, kind of like a New Year's sparkle scarf. Okay, and now do the other side. 
So I think this one will be a little bit faster because of the way that you wrap in the interior. So push down. So down on an angle. Okay, up and over. Okay, and all the way out, back in and around. I love the wrapping process of this entire loom idea. I think it's fun. I don't know why it's fun, but it's fun. And I think it's because this project grows so fast that you just kind of get the loop, uh, the wrapping is kind of like the fun part. The knitting is great too, but the wrapping is real fun. It's like a racetrack. Okay, up and over. Now you can see I just made a mistake there. I left. I took off one of the um, the silver glitter pieces. You know, good luck actually finding it. So what I'm going to do. Just, oh, there it is. Just gonna put it back on. If you can find it, great. If you not, you can deny it a little bit. It won't make too much of a difference because it's fluffy. And again, now we're done that. Just pop. Just using, I'm just using my hand, my finger over top of it so that when it pops, it just doesn't pop over somewhere else. It just pops up onto my hand and then straight back down. So let me show you wrapping it one more time. So come down on an angle. Okay, back up down, up, down, and all the way out. And now let's knit. Okay, let's knit the other side. Look how much is growing already. So what's the difference as well with this one compared to the shag? You'll notice that the sides are not as long. And you know what, maybe the other side was way too long, I don't know. It all depends on how much of a shag you really, really wanted. But this is like my sparkle scarf, so I want it to really shine. Sit down, okay. Look how fast you can go once you really get going. So good luck with that, everybody. And you know what, this little contraption I built is actually really helpful for me. And it may be helpful for you. I don't need to hold this whole thing in my hand and cause my hand to cramp. I can just continually rotate it back and forth like a rocking boat at a carnival ride or something. So so just that now, just pop and pop and voila. So keep on going everybody and thank you very much and we'll talk to you all real soon.